Hello, G.I. Joe fans. This is Chief321 right here, right now, bringing another fun felt exciting G.I. Joe vintage toy review. Today, we're going to be reviewing a 1983 G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center. Some of us vintage folks know it as the HCC 83. Now, the G.I. Joe Headquarters was made and released in 1983 and ran all the way up until 1986. At that point, it was discontinued in 1986 and replaced by nothing. So without further delay, we're going to open up the box. I'm going to uh, turn off the camera here for a minute. I'll set it up and we'll start bringing stuff out of the box. Excuse me. I am missing two things. I am missing one of the cameras and, excuse me, I got the hiccups, and one of the trays that go on the back. Now I'm not worried about either one of them. They're very easy to get a hold of on eBay, on Facebook as well. There's a lot of vintage collectors out there buying and selling all the time. So I'm not too worried about missing just those two things. I'd love to show uh, things complete. And uh, I want this video to be a uh, instructional video more or less. Maybe a guide for those who want one or have one. Maybe they want to see I might be missing a part or two. So this guide is going to be more or less uh, for everybody to be able to see how it should be, uh, what pieces are, I mean, should be with the G.I. Joe headquarters. I also do an instruction video on how to put the base together the best I can. I have very limited space. So without further delay, we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, everybody together, say, Yo, Joe. What did you say? Okay, so I got the box set up right now, and hopefully you can see it. Uh, I got a package here in the mail. Now, I got these. These are uh, going to be <clears throat> installed in the lights of the G.I. Joe headquarters. It's to kind of give it a custom make look, and hopefully to be... Uh, make it look a little more realistic hopefully it's just uh, these are not very expensive on eBay you can pick them up there is a ton of foam as you can see a lot of it um, we also got a lot of bubble wrap more bubble wrap yay oh, here we go we got our first piece this here actually sits in the center part and you can tell some of these decals are old and faded. Now it was a shame that these are just like paper decals instead of vinyl. Um, but for the time when this came out, this was very exciting. It's got some awesome engine detail work in there. And there's one thing that uh, Hasbro did not skip on. It was the engine details in their vehicles. And we'll kind of zoom in here. They gave really nice set of steps. It kind of looks like a nice old-fashioned style diamond plate floor. So we'll bring pieces out one by one. The front part, unfortunately, mine is missing the G.I. Joe logo sticker on here. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of this gray sticking out all over. This is definitely supposed to represent steel, metal, whatever. Um, this here, I love the detail in like all the little rivets. Now this was like the very first piece I ever owned growing up as a kid. A friend of mine, he got the base complete for his birthday. And I had the only two vehicles for um, Air Force at the time. I had the Skyhawk and the Cobra Rattler. So this, when he gave me this piece, this was the very first uh, part that I owned of the G.I. Joe headquarters. Now, this is not my original. This is the fourth um, set of G.I. Joe headquarters I have owned. Uh, I bought one as a young adult. Another one, after a short time after my son was born, and me and him got into it, of uh, collecting and he kind of grew out of it and I took that one and repainted that one all a um, it would have been a cherry red to make it look like it was for Crimson Guards now I can as you can see 
these pieces are big they're going to take up a lot of room a lot of room now this here I love this piece here because it's got the working um, oh elevator or what you may call uh, if you're a mechanic a car lift now there's some things I didn't really know about this and even though this is my fourth set until I watched uh, Form BX257 Kevin and Huda Cobra Commander 788 I did not know that these here had specific reasons why they were sculpted on here so these two here and this here is for the small snowmobile that came out in 1982 and 83 so that was awesome now, I knew about the wheelbase for the different vehicles which would be the vamp one the vamp two fits in there nicely as well I don't have one to display or show everybody right now but then the big laser cannon uh, don't remember the name of it without looking at it but it actually sits in these three very nicely now if you go to yojo.com you can see where all these placements are actually listed at look underneath headquarters central uh, command center and you can find how it's all laid out real nicely some of these decals as you can tell they're old they're fading now there's a way to fix the vinyl ones they would get air bubbles in them you can take a hair dryer set it on low you want to be about oh four to six inches away take a sewing needle and you can poke it a small hole in it and that will help uh, as it would heat up and re-stick to the surface uh, it would push the air out and it should stay very nicely so here's the other piece now this here I never knew it had a place to put ID cards I'd never known that me and my friends used it to lay our Joes down we would drive our tanks or Jeeps up we made our uh, mechanics well rock and roll he was our mechanic and clutch they did the oil changes on the tanks the Jeeps the motorcycles so we used it as a pit get it because it's supposed to be a pit for in the comic book so unfortunately some of these here you can see the tabs actually break off they are known to break off the tabs should look like this and they should stagger but I, I like how some of the decals still look very well to this very day now this was my biggest pet peeve whenever I've ever owned this I never thought it was supposed to be a gun I was like is it supposed to be a boat is it supposed to be like some kind of aircraft never really knew to me this was our unidentified something or another but it's got some really nice decal stickers on the inside hopefully this is uh, coming through and looking really nice here yay we got a good door here I'll get this out open up so we got the engine cover that goes here For right now we're just gonna set it there we got a very nice door not broke got a very nice uh, flag for the G.I. Joe headquarters uh, I like how it's don't have any uh, ear bubbles it don't look very faded this side looks like it was a little more faded um, but I like this that was really good and it's not broke at the end very nice now the main turret is these two pieces now it looks like at first that this here should elevate so on and so forth but you just take it and plug it in right there 
got to line it up right first. That would help. And that's how this piece goes together and sits right inside here. So for right now, that's as much of this piece I'm going to symbol. Now these are the, the lights. I like these things a lot. These are really nice. And that's what I got this for. Now it's got a small film on both sides. Here and here. Uh, you got to take a pair of tweezers and kind of scuff it just enough of the plastic to peel it up on both sides. And then it'll fit in real nicely. Now I'm not going to push it in until I take the plastic off of it. Evidently I have two of those pieces for the big cannon. It's probably from my other one. Uh, so we got the radar dish. Very, very nice. Not broke on either end of the tabs. Now usually you'll find this piece here broken. Uh, so far we got one seat. Now I've been waiting for a long time to open this box. But I had to find a big shelf. This whole whiteboard you see right here. That you've seen in some of my other videos. This is actually going to be used to display this big behemoth. It is huge. Now these here, I like these cannons very much. Um, and here is one of the cameras I am missing. Um, there actually should be uh, two of them for the base. <clears throat> so if you don't know what your G.I. Joe base is supposed to have, it comes with two of these, it comes with two of these searchlights, two of these uh, guns here, and two chairs. I don't know. One of the radar dish, one flag. It'll come with one of these in the post. It should come with one of these covers. It will come with at least one antenna. I have a couple for some reason. I don't know why, but I got two of them. And neither one is broke. We have one wall for the jail cell. Uh, it looks like it is unbroken either at this end or this end. It looks really good. I am really surprised. Because the jail, <coughs> excuse me, jail wall cells usually break especially right here for some reason the bottom one and this one yep no that's usually where it breaks and that will have some kind of slack in it okay looks like this is going to be the long side of the wall i have another door that is broken and another seat. Now I was really ecstatic when I first started watching vintage toy reviews. I ended up watching, ooh, another phone. <clears throat> I watched Hudaku Commander 788's review of the G.I. Joe headquarters. Fantastic job. And Form DX527, Kevin, awesome job. Awesome. So then that led me to uh, another video. I didn't even know about was uh, Toy Hunters. Toy Hunters got their G.I. Joe headquarters at a convention, a small convention. They got it complete, 100% complete for 30 bucks. Now I tried and I tried. I called around to the different dealers around here and every one of them wanted a premium penny. The guy I got this from, and all the extra pieces, sorry about bumping the camera there, all these pieces right here, oh, I got all them, and still everything in the box here, for under $50.
I figured by the time I get the other camera and the other tray, I'll probably be right at $50. Now, some people don't like to talk about price, what they pay for things, and so on and so forth. I think if I find a really good deal, I'm going to mention, hey, thanks a lot for a good deal. Now, the console, look at that. The decals are nice. They're sharp. They're not faded. They're peeled a little bit right up here underneath here. I don't know if you can see that well or not. But this here is, yeah, it's starting to peel. It's old. It's faded right along the edge a little bit. But overall, it's really nice. Still really good. Now, I never liked how this was always playing on this side. I don't know if that was supposed to represent the computer system is down and they're left with two maps and try to figure out what's going on with Cobra. Really don't know. Okay, another big section of the wall. And very nice. Neither one of them are broken. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Another chair. Yay. What? I got three chairs for this? Nice. <laughs> and more pieces. And as you can see, some of them are broke. But the other two are not. So I think this is going to work really well. Another big piece of the wall. A very nice big piece. Look at the detail on that. Very, very nice. I like the gun rack. That looks really nice. And notice none of these are broke. I love that. That is absolutely awesome to me. Same thing here. Very nice. Not broken. Like I said, this thing is big. It's massive. It has, it has a ton of parts. And there's a ton of playability. Now this here on the back side is starting to fade a little bit. Probably because it was set close to a window. And so like I got to it. Now there's a lot of good things about the G.I. Joe base. And there's a lot of bad things. Things like the tabs can always be broke. Which I've said a couple times already. Another piece. And another broken piece. Now the guy I got this from. He gave me such a good deal on this. Three weeks later, after I got this, he sends me an email saying that he forgot to pack this part. He didn't write and ask me to pay him more for shipping or charge me for it. He just mailed it out. Dude, awesome, awesome job. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to give you a 3 plus A rating by me for eBay. It just, I can't believe it, you know. When you sent me this piece and you said you mailed it out, you even went as far as give me a tracking number. You went above and beyond. And I hope you're watching this. I hope you see how much I enjoy this. This is going to a good home. It will be displayed. And last but not least is the big simple thing itself. The main the main part of the hall, if you want to call it the big body of the base, if you want to call that. There's a ton of detail on the floor. Nice pegs, unbroken, very nice, very nice. Now here's the door for the back cover. Now this is contact, oh holy snakes, there's another radar dish in here. Very nice, that's even got really nice detail in the back. A nice collar, and not broke. Great job, great. And it's, that looks like that's uh, possibly Breaker's backpack. I'll have to check my book. And here's one of the trays. Now this came with two trays. But I only got one. And that's 
how it should sit in there. Now this here, like you see, the tray is designed to hold your action figure accessories. Now we also used it as a kid's when I was about seven or so we would use this as a doorway to go down to a lower level. So now we're going to move everything and we're going to start assembly. Give me a minute, I'll get set up. Okay, so I already went on ahead and moved everything out of the way, as you can see. Uh, hopefully this will be coming in really good here on the, the camera here. <laughs> Since I'm on this side and my assistant is currently doing other things. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start on the right and we're going to work our way to the left. So... Um, we can put the radar dish right about here. It just pegs in there. And as you can tell, the radar actually swivels 360 degrees. Now, it doesn't elevate or descend. It just it sits there. It sits loose, but nonetheless, it still sits there. We'll put the great mighty... Uh, oh, wait, that don't go there. Now, I don't know if the camera can see this or not. But this one here is a little darker. This is a little lighter. Probably because of stress where I can see a lot of gray and white right there. So I'm going to go with a nicer antenna. I'm broken. And we'll put it right there. Now I've decided to show there is a difference on the seats I did not know about. They're all basically the same. But as you can tell by looking at these two, these are actually textured. And this one here has a little bit of a white spot. I don't know why. But then this one here is doesn't have any texture whatsoever. So the question here lies. Which one of these fit? So we're going to try this one, a little test run. It does fit, but it's loose. Since it's really loose, I'm going to say this probably goes to the tactical battle platform. And we'll check later when I get ready to do that review. So I'm going to say these two are going to be, I don't know if this shows up really well or not. Um, we're going to go ahead and put them in. They fit very nice, very snug. So if you're missing a chair and you see one uh, that goes for the battle battle uh, platform, you can easily just swap it out. It will be loose though, just to let you know. So like I said, I wanted this video to be an instructional guide, be able to help the average person to collect and complete their set of the Jesuit headquarters. Now sometimes people want to build the jail cell first, then put this in. But this here has two pegs, one here and one here, to fit here and here. Now I should just drop in, push all the way to the side, and lightly go until you feel it click. There we go. Like I said, it clicked. Now there's a lot of different ways to assemble the cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the back. Now you just drop it in and slide it in. Now a way to tell if you got this going on right as you assemble yours, if you take a look right back here crossed here there is this little groove that goes all the way from one end all the way down the other now see how this goes right here off to my left that's when in doubt follow the groove 
Now this will just set right here and you can just line it right up. And it just clicks in place. Now if yours doesn't click, it could be a broken tab. It could be just loose. We're gonna do the other piece. As you can see, this goes to the right. This slides into this slot here. Now see how mine here doesn't really want to lock in. Here we go. I just lightly worked it back and forth until it went. Now I can't always get it to do that. Now this one here will go here. And how can you tell is one, uh, let's see if I turn it here. Right here is a peg. I don't know if I can get a better angle here. But there's a little peg here that the door hinge sets in. So the door will set here and swing open. That's what this little thing here is to stop it from swinging all the way around and breaking the bottom tab. Now, too bad they didn't think of making this peg here stronger. Now, I knew I had one of these from a previous set, and it was broke. That's why I ordered a replacement for three bucks. Very nice. I love it. It has very good functionality. As you can tell, some of the stickers on this are just so faded, it's hard to even tell what it's supposed to be. So this just fits in. Now, this is the one corner that every one I've ever owned was always loose. But with a broken peg, it's going to be why. Now, I've seen it where some people went on ahead and glued that right there. I'm not going to glue mine. I'm happy with it being the way it is. Just lift up, slide the door peg through. Okay. We'll get a close up here. Just slide it through. And you can open it up, drop it in, and slide back. And then drop the bottom peg into place. Okay. Now this has, now this is the one area that has always been weak on every one of the sets I've ever owned. This doesn't always lock in right. This one doesn't either. And there's no way to really hold all of it together. Unless you get a big rubber band to kind of help hold it tight. But if you do, you're not going to be able to open up your cell. Unless you want to display it kind of open like that. Now, a lot of times I leave mine open like that. For Joe's to throw the Cobra bad guys in there and be done with them. But there was a lot of nice things about this. When I was 7 years old seven or eight and my friend when he got his his dad told us we can do so much more with this his dad got plexiglass and measured from the bottom to the top of every wall and he cut out plexiglass it took him a long time but then we would pop it in and out and that was our medical bay for doc uh, one of the Joes would break a thumb, hey, go see Doc. And we would use the back as a doorway to go from one level down to another. And then his dad did one other thing. Cut out paneling on the exact same way. Measure from top to bottom, from side to side, on every wall. Took the extra accessory pack guns and glued them and made it look like a armory. So our central piece here had three different abilities and we had three different levels and it was awesome. It was an amazing time growing up and having that. Now, 
We'll take a look here. No broken pegs. We'll set that right down there, like that. And we'll turn it around. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of empty space underneath the staircase. Staircase just goes, it pops right in. It should fit very nicely into these pegs. Here and here, I think there's another one there. Now at this point, we'll take this thing here. I never did like it as a kid. Never. And I still don't. But this here has one thing that none of my other three ever had. Unbroken tabs. Very nice. It just set it on top, light it in, and give it a light, and I mean light, push forward, take the wall, pull it back. Ta-da! Now our central part of our headquarters is now complete. Awesome. So now we're going to take our accessories here. We're going to set them on the back here. Get them out of the way so we don't lose them, damage them. The extra chair for right now can go in the cell. Now at this point, this flag here goes right here next to the big green whatever you want to call this thing. Ugh, I don't like it. And I, th I think we'll leave it like that for the time being. We'll take the other guns, the other parts. Since I have a duplicate and it's together, we'll put that back in. You know what? We'll just set it there. The other antenna. We'll set that right there. The searchlights. We'll set right there. Now this will be the last pieces I'll actually assemble. Okay. So now we get to line these pegs up with these slots down here. And it's pretty simple. Just take it and slide up. You'll hear it pop in. Now this is how I assemble mine. You can assemble yours however you want. Okay, I believe this piece here goes right here. Now I'm not going to lock it in place just yet. Now your gun rack should always face in on both sides. Let's see how this looks. Here. Okay. Just drop them in. And we'll kind of wiggle it in place. Okay. And then slide this in here. Now this is a little more tricky than I remember as a kid. I remember this being a lot easier than this. <laughs> a lot easier. Remember, we always had to. Yeah, we're gonna slide this out. Yeah, that's it. Slide this away from the main structure. Set your wall there. Drop this right in. L lock right here. Hopefully, you can see this in the camera. Yep. And just you want to push it lightly to this one. You want to bring this one here forward. So don't move anymore. Now don't try to really, you know, grab her. That'd be a bad thing. Now, we will take a look. Okay. 
Now this wall actually goes to the car <coughs> motor pool and just sits right in there. Lock it, you want to lock it down and then you pull forward. Now it should line up with this little line right here on the inside. And that completes that section. Now you're starting to see how big this thing is. I still don't even have the other side of the motor pole set up yet. And you can see this thing is just massive. The playability of this thing is awesome. Amazing. So here comes the next question. How do you know which wall goes where? The pegs are supposed to be identical. So you could either have one here or have the interior facing. But then if you take a look on the ends here, they're actually tapered. So you take a look right there. So I believe that this goes towards this side over here. And it looks like it would line up really nice. So we'll take this piece here. Lock it in, push it in. As you can tell, that completes this side here. So we'll probably push this out of the camera frame. Take that there. Okay. Now we're going to take this, line it straight up. Boom, there we go. This piece here goes in the back. I hope the camera is getting a good camera angle of that. Actually, before I push it all the way tight, I need to slide it out so I can assemble these two walls together. But this piece has to go on first. should hear some kind of click then this here will line up nicely with this side over here move the camera just a bit okay hope this is coming in really good and just slide it and lock it in place take this and I believe it only fits one way. Yep. Ta-da. Now at this point, I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to place all the things up on top. And I'm going to install the lenses in the searchlights, or spotlights, whatever you're going to call them. And uh, we'll start our review. Okay, we're back. I got the lens got the plastic off the lens now and it looks really nice I am very very happy about that and it's just a simple snug and pop right in and I like that it gives that that little extra detail that I wish they would have done back in 1983 a little bit to 86 on this that I think that looks just really really cool take a minute here and just see how much better that looks when the light hits it I hope it is um, alright <clears throat> so then we'll take that unfortunately this one here oh is a little weak right there I don't know if it's gonna fit and stay nope guess not alright The one, and once this is in place, it's going to be hard to get it out. Okay, so I went ahead and put everything up here, as you can tell. Uh, these here can go basically anywhere 
really uh, wherever you feel like you want to place them sometimes they'll fit in these little grooves these little slots sometimes they won't depend on what your make you actually have I'm not saying one actually fits better than the other but uh, here's just a quick overview now as we take a look at this you see that this thing is just like I said big and the biggest issue I have with it is it this here um, this is supposed to be some kind of anti-aircraft uh, weapon but it does not uh, elevate very high as you can see it in the G.I. Joe cartoon this here was bigger it looked more like uh, the thunderclap cannon where it would actually elevate I think they should have done the, the cannon from the thunderclap onto this it would have been really nice then we got the Mobat in here as you can see I got cover girl in the tank and this here helps add firepower to the base I have my locust which is actually a remake of the dragonfly and that will be reviewed later on as of all these okay, try to get out of light here Yeah, snake eyes guarding the prisoners. We'll kind of zoom in here on the prisoners. Just a quick shout out to the different vipers I had. The Zartan that I repaired. Got that inside the, the cargo uh, bay. And as you can see, it actually lifts up very nicely. Now, how about it actually going down? It doesn't shake as I go slow going up and down. Uh, the All Striker will get its own review. Don't worry. I got my Scarlet and Breaker at the controls, as you can see, in the Mobat. Now here comes the biggest question that some people may ask. Will the Mauler fit in the place where the Mobat is supposed to? This is the heavy cargo um, armament. Um, what would you want to call this? Car bay maybe, perhaps? So we'll take that out. And get the Mauler and let's find out well, I don't think it's gonna fit very well barely making any room because of these side pegs right here sticking out and as you can tell it would hit that right there so no it's not gonna fit very nicely so we'll try it the other way. We'll back in nicely. And I'm going to say no. Can we just drop it in? Set it in? Yeah. But the pegs on both sides, as you can see, it, they just are not going to fit very well. And as you can see, I have still a lot of project to work on getting this 100% complete before I do the review for this. So, um, as we review the G.I.J. <coughs> G.I. Joe headquarters, the selling point to me is this is big. You can put a ton of action figures in here and the playability is awesome. It is amazing to me. When I was growing up, as a kid, the fun we would have, the decals are awesome, sorry, uh, Breaker, didn't mean to uh, knock you down. Uh, 
All right, so uh, the good points about it is it's big. It is massive. There is a ton of playability, collectability for this. So, now the bad things about it. It's big, it's massive, and it, it takes up a lot of space. The biggest complaint I have is there is nothing but gray from, from one point all the way to the other. Some color, some kind of contrast would have been awesome, amazing. But I guess that's what filling it up with action figures is for. But then what about the outside? So, uh, so this is Chief 321. This is my review of the G.I. Joe base headquarters. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this to be informative. This video might be a bit long, and I apologize. I didn't want it to be a real long video. I'd like to keep it under 30 minutes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all loaded in one shot. It might be two. I'm too not, or, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not too terribly sure if I can do it all in one shot as far as loading it all on internet or not. This... I enjoy putting this together. I actually enjoyed it more putting it together and doing a video of how to because there's uh, some young people out there that are now picking up collecting the old vintage line and hopefully they can use this as a good source guide uh, even if you had it once before and kind of forgot well what did it have what did it come with I hope you really find this informative if you like it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe. We got a lot of new videos coming. Uh, this month being March month, we're going to do a whole month of Dreadnoughts. Oh, yes, Dreadnoughts. And the reason why is um, March is kind of a rainy, dreary season. Kind of fits with Zartan and Dreadnoughts coming from the swamp area. So we'll do Zartan, Zarandar, Zarana. Uh, we also do the three torch buzzer ripper and thrasher now i have one that was never seen in the um, animated series which would be road pig so we have a ton of them coming up you don't want to miss them so hit that subscribe button and remember be kind rewind and have a great and wonderful week later 320 or chief 321 out <laughs> a bit tired all right we good